Everybody listen up. This is a public service announcement. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, or brown. All that matters is that you're down with the clown till you're dead in the ground. I'm talking about juggalos. You might be wondering what a juggalo is. It means you are a fan of the insane clown posse and related music. What makes these guys good? Well, the music they make is horrorcore. It's scary music. You get a very hypnotic, carnival vibe from listening to it. And in general, I like horrorcore music that includes Tech 9 Hobson, Maybe Tyler, and early Eminem. I don't know how you could hate horrorcore. You like horror movies, but when it's introduced into music, that's when it gets controversial. This CD in your kid's room, take notice. Two high school dropouts from Detroit have formed a rap group called the Insane Clown Posse, ICP to the kids. And what they advocate makes some of the black rappers look like Shirley Temple. Not all music needs to be happy and cheerful. I also like how theatrical ICP is. They really put on a performance. The clown makeup adds on to the music. The image is pretty cool to me. The juggalo movement is huge. There's actually people who tattoo clown makeup on their face. Every year there is the gathering of the Juggalos, usually with an attendance of around 10 to 20,000 people. It's a great family environment appropriate for all ages. But there has been some controversy. In 2010, when Tila Tequila was performing, the Juggalos were throwing bottles and fireworks at her. Apparently she was saying some stupid stuff on Twitter earlier. Maybe the Juggalos were onto something, because right now, Tila Tequila is a confirmed crazy person who believes that she is God and sometimes is racist. No. She went on Twitter and she was saying, uh, you know, she was spelling clown with a K and that was... You she know, was disrespecting you. Irking the juggalos yeah, a little bit. You know. They didn't like that. And she wasn't a juggalo, but she was posting things on the web like, like, hey, a website like, hey, I'm a juggalo. You know, juggalos were like, no, you ain't. You know what I mean? Right. And they, she was being disrespectful a little bit. But we asked juggalos in our seminar earlier that day. We were like, look, we know the word is she's going to get booed. Yeah, everybody shit. was like, she about we, to get we it. We would we like, like <laughs> everybody to be cool from our opinion. Of course, we don't right. control the juggalos. Come on, when your security guy gets hit in the head with a rock, that's time to leave the state. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That I would think, you know, and then she skedaddled to her like her dressing room was right there, and then it almost got overran. And then me and one of the guys from Twisted, a group on a label, you right. know what I'm saying? Yes. We like kind of dispersed the crowd, right. and I went in there, and man, she looks weird in real life. That broad Tila Tequila, she's like this tall, and she has a chipmunk face, and her titties are way too big for her body. Just <laughs> looks like a fucking alien. But anyhow, <laughs> got her out safely. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you weren't sitting there look, maybe because her face was swollen up and she was bleeding. But <laughs> oh, God, what are you talking? About? <laughs> but man, she, yeah, she was she was an odd looking spectacle. What, you know, what so been a lot fun? better on TV. What been then when Riff Rap performed, the Juggalos threw food at him. When he was noticeably bothered, they threw even more stuff at him. He ended up leaving early. <laughs> Yo, 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 you're hitting the equipment up here with shit, guys. Hey, man. I see. We want to have fun, guys. We want to have fun with y'all, guys. Man, this ain't no fuck. Play, play more music. Fuck it. Just keep playing. Fuck it, man. That's fuck it. Y'all turn it back up. Come on, fuck it. Fuck it. We keep throwing it. Fuck it. Fuck up y'all people's stage. I don't know, fuck. Oh, damn. This is scary. Fuck it. Turn the music back up. In the win over the Juggalos, you gotta spray them with Fago or dump a two liter on your head because Fago is really important to the Juggalo community. But we're gonna talk about some of the feuds ICP has had over the years. This one isn't really relevant, but they once had a brief confrontation with Eminem. Back in 1997, Marshall Mathers was unknown and ICP was majorly successful. Eminem was willing to do anything to promote the Slim Shady EP, so for the release party, he put ICP's name on the flyer saying that they might come. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about Eminem. The first time I met him, in 1997 or maybe 1998, we walked into St. Andrew's Hall and he came up to us with a flyer. And he said, what's up? He was like, I'm Eminem. And he gave me a flyer. And um, it said, Eminem record release party. And then it said on the flyer, it said, special guests in the house. 
and it said ICP, and then underneath it, it said maybe. And then I looked at it, and I had my name, and I said, how are you going to put ICP on this fucking flyer when, you know what I'm saying, when you don't even know if we're going to be there, and then put maybe like that. And then he said, uh, well, I'm asking you now, you know what I'm saying, you want to come show up? And I was like, hell no, man, what the fuck? And I was like, man, don't be putting our name on that shit, and I walked away. And then that basement tape came out. Fuck ICP, buy my CD. Fuck ICP, buy my CD. And we were like, man, that's bullshit. We still didn't think nothing of it. And then an interview in the Detroit Free Press came out. And somebody said, what do you think ICP? You know, they said, because he was just coming out. And they were like, what do you think of ICP? What do you think of Esham? You know, and he said, I think that ICP isn't real. Oh. All the time. Those guys are idiots. You don't oh. like those guys? No. They're, they're, they're a mockery. They're not, the, you know what I mean? They're not even rap. So by that time, we were like, fuck this kid. You know what I'm saying? It was like, now about, we still didn't think nothing of it. About some time went by, maybe three months. And all of a sudden, that high my name is, was everywhere. And uh, we took Slim, we took my name is, and we added our own lyrics and we made this funny ass song and we played it on our radio show. My name is My name is My name is Slim Anus. The next day, Eminem was in that station doing an interview, just promoting his shit. And the guy cut the interview, did the whole interview, and then he was like, Hey, you know ICP? And he said, Yeah, ICP, yeah, fuck yeah, or whatever he said, Von and Jay and Shaggy. And then they go, yeah, well, you know, they got a, their own show on this station. <laughs> and, and, he, and he was like, oh, yeah? Hell, yeah. You know, he was just being cool. You know what I'm saying? And then they were like, um, and they did, they did this last night. They played this. And he played the uh, Slim Anus, the song we did. You know what I'm saying? Right in his face. My name is Can I have the attention of your ass? My name is The Butt Sniffer. Hi, kids. Do you like anus? I let Dr. Dre fill out my butt for a chance to be famous. ICP was offended that their names were being used to promote another artist, and they told Eminem that they wouldn't come. M would take a couple shots at ICP in a radio freestyle. In response, they made a parody of My Name Is, referring to Eminem's alter ego as Slim Anus. Eminem responded by saying his anus is indeed slim because he doesn't get pumped in it, bringing ICP blow-up dolls to his concert. Eminem? Yeah, yeah, we got, we, it, it's all love now, of course, you know what I mean? But yeah, we got into it, and, and, and it was more of a, um, it, it was an ugly, ugly battle, you know? But that's because we're both from Detroit, and our camps were fighting. It, it wasn't us and Eminem scrapping somewhere, you know what I mean? It was our camps fighting each other and that was that wasn't good man that was bad you know what i mean <laughs> it was like you know what i mean those guys would be at somewhere and we would be somewhere and it would just be a, a fucking war jumping off on the street you know and it wouldn't even involve him or us at all you know what i mean and that was yeah. just fucked up man for a long time you know what i mean that was an ugly fight man and and before he passed away um uh, proof um who was eminem's right hand man and and of course he's a lot more than that Especially here in Detroit, man. He's like a um he's like a godfather of rap here in Detroit. He's like a um legend, you know what I mean? Um, but proof um was on a mission, it seemed, to squash a lot of the beefs Eminem had. You know what I mean? Yeah. In this like about the right about the year he died, proof was doing this and, and he reached out to us. And we had like a bowling match. Violent J recently said in an interview that the feud was mostly between the camps and he never really had a big issue with Eminem. And back in 2005, ICP would go bowling with Eminem's rap collective, D12. The beef officially ended and members of D12 went on to say positive things about ICP and the Juggalos. Now in 1997, a band named Cold Chamber was discovered at OzFest. Their debut self-titled album was certified gold and they were managed by Sharon Osbourne. On paper, it looked like this band was successful, so in 1999, they went on tour with ICP. 
Unfortunately, they weren't received well. ICP fans were not buying their merch. People were asking for refunds. So ICP ended up kicking Cold Chamber off the tour. This enraged the band's manager, Sharon Osbourne, who tried to sue ICP. You know Cold Chamber's manager, Sharon Osbourne? Yes. She's like a, a big heavyweight in the music business. Oh, she's she like, hates yeah, she's Ozzy Osbourne's yeah. very, uh, wife. Uh, very influential. You know what I mean? And she doesn't like you? And that bitch means nothing to me. Really? You don't care? I slap that bitch. Bitch. You don't even two f clowns want to slap my face, Casey. That's fine. I'll go in the studio. Let them f try. Well, Cold Chamber was working with Insane Clown Posse. Is that how this started? Yes, this is how. It and the Insane Clown Posse fired Cold Chamber from the tour. Is that right? After two shows. After two shows, yes. right? And that they upset you. We weren't drawing any tickets. You We'd do anything we could, right? Other than blatantly. Tell the band they're not drawing tickets. No, Are you guys suing each other or no, something? No, Is that no, what's going on? Cold Chamber hasn't had an Chamber. album out. No, no. I don't deny Cold Chamber's a big band. Right. They, they got a lot of fans. They haven't had an album out in like three or four years. Right. Your they point of view. They weren't drawing any right. damn fans. Now, let's stream. You want to drag? We went on our website and said production problems. That's why we kicked them out of the tour. You want to make it public? Your boys suck and they're not worth any tickets. You were at... What, Anybody that was anywhere near the show would tell you they didn't draw any. You could tell who they drew because their fans would have fishnet thongs on. And there was like two of them in our crowd. Real juggalos don't dress like that. They would sell. How many shirts would you sell? Give us facts on that, bitch. How many shirts would you sell? She argued with them on the Howard Stern Show and bet ICP $50,000 that their next album would not sell 200,000 copies, and she demanded $12,000 for each show Cole Chamber wasn't a part of. You're just, you're just over. You're a failure. Oh, yeah. Accept it. Your career is in the toilet, boys. You're over. I tell you what, okay? Uh, Here, yeah, Howard. Ahead, okay. Ahead, okay, I will bet them yes. $50,000. Okay, now you're getting... The next record that they release doesn't even sell 200,000 units. Right, can we do that? And that they get yeah. dropped we make by that their record company. And they will get dropped by After their record their company. Next record. Hold on, After their not, next record. Our record ain't coming out until like a year and a half, but hey, can we make that official? So? Yes. He, the one thing he said which was absolutely true was that Cold Chamber didn't belong on their tour. Okay. Musically, the whole thing. It was thing a mistake. Was, it was a big mistake. But the situation is, I am very powerful. Okay, yes. I'm very, very powerful in this business. There's nothing that I want to do to you. There's not, do you think I'm threatening you? I don't have to threaten you because you're over. Your career is finished. Your has been, so you're a joke. You have no musical credibility. You don't even play an instrument and you don't <laughs> sing. You sing through your arseholes. Shaggy, I mean, get you, you have no musical credibility. You're laughed at in the industry. I might be feared, but I'm respected. Right. You have no respect. You're a joke. You're over. You will be dropped, and you're going to have to pay me fifty thousand dollars because your next record will stiff. Right, like your tour. Right. Cold Chamber ended up disbanding, and ICP's album did sell over two hundred thousand copies, with the one after that reaching five hundred thousand. Sharon Osbourne did not understand the Juggalo movement. You know, you you've been on this show, and you've been at war with Sharon Osbourne, who is Ozzy Osbourne's wife. And yet, when you heard she had cancer, you sent her flowers. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> with a note, yes, that said, don't go nowhere without paying us back the money you owe us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> with a note that bullshit. said, don't think about leaving without the fifth, fucking 50 G's you owe us, no, bitch. Cool. Awesome. The band Kiss, you might know them. They also wear makeup and used to be popular in the 80s. ICP has a recurring element known as the Dark Carnival, and in 1998, KISS released an album called Psycho Circus. This was seen as trying to capitalize off the success of ICP, because during the 90s, ICP had a couple platinum albums, and KISS hadn't gone platinum since the 1980s. And the song Everybody Rise, Violin J raps, Fuck Gene Simmons, You Make Me Sick, Psycho Circus, You Stole My Shit. Gene Simmons being the frontman for KISS. And I'm guessing KISS was too afraid to respond. Now before I get to Twisted and Young Wicked, Violin J once made a beat that sampled Sweet Home Alabama, but he never used it. His producer Mike Clark accidentally showed it to Kid Rock, and it became a platinum selling song all summer long. I don't know. All of a sudden, 
All Summer Long comes out. Kid Rock, right? Mike Clark did the track. You know what I mean? And my loop is in there. And so next time I saw Mike, we went had Thai food. And I'm like, Mike, <laughs> how do you get my song, dog? <laughs> and Mike was like, he was like, I gave him a dad. It, the track I was supposed to play him was the second one. He heard that and he was like, I'm let's kill it. You know, <laughs> whatever happened for my track. He couldn't say nothing, you know what I mean? So Kid Rock probably don't even know. But that was my beat. <laughs> It's a great beat. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, let me make this clear. I'm in no way fucking saying I would have done anything even remotely as fresh as what he ended up doing. I'm not claiming that. I'm just saying for the footnote in history, <laughs> little do the people know that if you were to dissect that track, there's a Warren Zevon. Is it werewolves? In Tech Nine has always been influenced by ICP, even wearing face paint and sometimes emulating their poses. Since 2003, he frequently toured with ICP, giving Juggalo shout outs in his music. The feud started when Tech Nine denied being similar to ICP. He even said that the face paint he uses is an African cultural thing. You, Tech Nine, and your brand, and Strange Music, is like the not psychotic and much better musically, no disrespect, Insane Clown Posse. Away from having, well, why not a strange music day? Like a, a festival. They, what's theirs called again? We're gonna have one. There's called, there's just called the Gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> why not yeah. the much more normal, but still lit, <laughs> uh, Gathering of the Strangians? I think people uh, put us together because of the face paint, you know what I mean? But And you've done Juggalos before, right? Yeah, I've done the Gathering, you know. Like every, they fuck every, with every, you. every year they call me. So, they fuck, so their people do so wait, am I wrong? Are there similarities business-wise from how you guys operate, you think? Or no? Our business model pretty much came from uh, E-40, Sick Witted, yep. and, uh, you Out know, trunk Travis, Travis was more into uh, Master P's way, you know what I'm saying, back then. But we didn't know anything about Insane Clown Posse. Well, we? of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, well, you guys yeah, are yeah. almost contemporaries, time-wise. Time yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like um, um, they invited us to be on a tour some years ago. Their, um, their fans invited us on this uh, tour with Bone Thugs and Harmony, ICP. Uh, uh, Cottonmouth Kings. I so, okay, what the what was that like? What was what is playing was, for that crowd like? It was it was the worst at first because when we started, they didn't know us. So were they just they, chanting? When, when, when I, no, when I got out on stage on our first show in uh, Cleveland, the, they all the juggalos turned their backs on me. Damn. Violent J responded by saying Tech wouldn't be where he is today without the Juggalo scene. It seemed like Tech wanted an identity beyond Juggalos, and this angered the community and created a wedge between the fan bases. As of now, they seem mostly cool with each other. Back though, so you you felt that Tech's uh, assessment of their influ of Travis's influence coming from No Limit when you think in fact you you know that it came from psychopathic more I know, than No Limit. I know for a fact that um, Strange Music came out in 1999. Strange Music, Psychopathic Records. Use your own judgment if you think there's a similarity. But what I'll tell you is that Travis told my manager himself, uh, we we've read your book four times, four times. All right, trying to figure this thing out. This is on their come up. Now I don't know what he would have to gain by gassing our manager up saying that. I don't know why he would say something like that. What benefit he's trying to gain out of gassing ICP's manager up, you know, but they absolutely got some love. Tech started receiving some love in Kansas City, all right? He wasn't doing much of anything for most part of his career, all right? Then all of a sudden, um, I think Angelic came out and even the cover of Angelic where he's got his back to the crowd and he took a picture is a, a photo we did about three years earlier. You know what I'm saying? Same exact thing. We're standing like this with our back to the crowd. I'm not, I'm not. Man, that we came I, out with as a poster. I know that I'm right. trying, I know I'm sounding like I'm dissing tech, man. And I love tech. This is You just sincere. want clarity. For the for juggalos. The right. Now this one is weird and it's mostly unknown why this happened. But a few years ago, Shaggy 2 Dope drop kicked Fred Durst on stage. And this was his explanation. I'm still looking for this dude. He gangster, huh? You ever heard of ICP? No. Have you ever heard of Limp Bizkit? No. Where are these dudes at, bro? Like, for real. They can't be staying far away. I would love for this dude to come on and ask for a go live. Oh, you hardcore Mr. Shaggy 2 Dope? Let's go live right now. I seen Takashi 6 9 do it. You want to fucking stage crash my stage, bro? After I watched your fucking shit, gave you props, my G? Fucking dick, bro. Dick move. Like, who does that? 
Like you're chasing clout from an unchaseable clout. I want to apologize to everybody that was on that uh, stage okay. because that was some whole shit, man. It really was. I wasn't up there to harm nobody. I really wasn't trying to drop kick him because, come man. Well, you, you clearly weren't trying too right. hard. Well, yeah, it was like wrestling style. But I want to like do, wrestling. I, Fred Durst didn't take the hit. Like, no, they, no you got to learn to take the hit. You, you know, from being like you're going to be right. very soon on stage. If somebody runs up on your stage when you're up there. That's, right. that's some whole shit, it, man. You know, that's your state. It's uh, not yeah, ideal. That's your personal right. area for that hour, however long you're up there. Right. And coming inside of that is whole shit. And I violated that one billion okay. percent. And I would like to personally apologize to every man not just on that stage but that was involved with that show and that festival he could also finally twisted they were a rap group signed to psychopathic records in the late 90s for those who don't know psychopathic records is the label owned by icp at first juggalos did not like twisted they also wore face paint and there was a fat one and a skinny one after a few tours and successful albums, Twisted became accepted by the Juggalo community. Then in 2012, they left Psychopathic Records and started their own label called Magic Ninja Entertainment. They were signing artists who used to be a part of Psychopathic, like AMB. Twisted would go on to say that they weren't paid very well at Psychopathic and believed the Juggalo march was a publicity stunt. Just a difference of views. Time to yeah. like... They wanted to do one thing, and we wanted to do another. What they want to do and what you want to do? We wanted to continue going the direction that we were going. We explain that, it, explain it became, that more. It became a political stance. It right. became a political stance with them to, to act on, 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 on something, and we had a difference of opinions. They wanted to sue the FBI. They right. wanted, to, they, they <laughs> wanted to, to, to go and march on, on Washington over this, this, this issue. The Juggalos, which are the people that made us who we are, the mm -hmm. people that we represent day in and day out. Absolutely were assessed by the FBI because people were getting arrested and they kept seeing Hatchet Man all over the place because right. that shit was everywhere. So they're like, what the fuck is going on? Is this some crazy gang? So they assessed it. The next year they came out, they're like, no, you guys are not a gang. No more on the list, right? So these years go by. And all of a sudden, dude has this idea about going down to the FBI and marching and telling all the kids we're doing it because they labeled us a gang. And it ain't fucking true. The whole march was for the information as to why the whole thing was assessed as a gang. We're not a gang. We ain't assessed as one. It was a big manipulation. And me and my man stood our fucking ground. Real talk. We didn't buckle. Cause he we guys, didn't make up excuses. Either. We walked away from everything, Jew, to stand behind what we fucking believe. What, like, ain't about being malicious and all do, that. They do. If they come out and they're like, "Fuck Twister," there's some bitches. Fuck them. Do That's they? what they do. Do they say that? We've heard they have. Yeah. We've heard yeah. things. I haven't heard it physically from them, but we've heard things. You but know what I mean? Like but it's at like at the end of the day, man, we're good. Say what you want to say. We're gonna keep it pushing. We had our own opinion on how on how the scenario. Uh, needed to be addressed again it's an opinion it's like assholes everybody right. has their own our opinion was to possibly try to get l legal services for these people in question that that had this stigma fall upon them it was like you know some people couldn't get in the army because they had these tattoos or some people were getting their kids taken away because of cps because of being a juggalo right. we delve these... deeper into the stories which we did we pulled it all and we look and we're like it ain't got shit to do with being a juggalos because they found a bunch of fucking heroin in your house you know there's, <laughs> you know there's, what I mean? like, there's always <laughs> fucking for real there's always some kind of crazy backstory and the thing is 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 if for any reason the juggalos were on a fucking list of mm -hmm. any kind me and this motherfucker be the first ones down there flat out the first one but do you knew. think that was this a was this a publicity absolutely it's what he told me right to my fucking face the thing the thing the thing about the assessment to really, like, that, that, that a lot of people don't understand is like the police are like a gang mm -hmm. so the police got different gang chapters in every every state across the nation so they get together and they do these assessments you say hey in chicago there's some motherfuckers going around calling the hatchet riders and these people are called the malinkos and these people are and y'all assess and say hey watch your back out there man because these people out here are doing this shit keep your eye out for that that's, right. that's what an assessment is right you know when you when you preach something factually and you say it's in stone like the tablet you know you get Moses, all these people believe in it and then it's not necessarily that case and 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 it's like we took a stance to, to to not be a part of it because we didn't necessarily believe in it. Right. 
really interesting. Supposedly in 2009 and 2010, a couple juggalos in California clicked up in prison. They had hatchet tattoos, sort of looked out for each other. I have no idea if this is true, but national gang intelligence declared that juggalos were a gang and that 10% of juggalos belong to some sort of criminal organization. They cited these anecdotal incidents where a juggalo was selling weed or got into a fight to help the case that it's a gang. Spent months and months speaking to various promoters and venues directly. Promoters passed, citing not wanting that element in the room. When I'd ask what element, the answer was that shit the FBI is talking about. Several venues also rejected us, stating that they couldn't rent to us because their local police department was concerned about the FBI element. I say bullshit. But really what it is, is say five juggalos are barbecuing in Utah, wearing their gear or whatever, the police department for that city gets more funding because there's gang activity. Because of the gang label, there was discrimination. If you go to jail and have a hatchet tattoo, they'll open up a gang file on you. And a lot of cops were under the impression that this was a gang symbol. So ICP went on a press run, Fox News, Vice News, a lot of big outlets just to remind people that they are not a gang. The press run was a good thing because more people got the message that Juggalos are good people. But Twisted said that this was a publicity stunt and that Juggalos weren't actually being targeted like that. They think the discrimination was exaggerated. A lot of Juggalos will tell you that they've been stopped before for no reason. For comparison, and it's not exactly the same, but MS-13 was inspired by metal bands like Led Zeppelin, but Led Zeppelin fans were never labeled as gang members overall. A couple juggalos go to jail, and now all of them have to answer for that. It's definitely not a gang. There's not a juggalo hood that bangs on the crypts or whatever. There's no gangland episode about juggalos. It's so dumb. Twisted's new album is worse than Bald Ricky's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Reconcile with Twisted or slap Keegan in the teeth? I'll be like, hey, you gotta take the teeth bump. <laughs> with ICP and Twisted since Magic Ninja came about is because of us making it happen. You know what I'm saying? That's the behind the scenes realness. You know what I'm saying? It's us having to fucking beg them and fucking pay them ridiculous money, give them masters the fucking records and shit to make that shit still happen and put on the facade that we're still cool like a family. You know what I'm saying? And that could be anything further from the truth. They're, they're so overshadowed by us, you know what I'm saying, on, on every aspect of their career, and uh, I'm guessing... And that's not, that's not you like, made twisted. We yeah. absolutely, but when he says we overshadow him, shadow him, that's, I just want to state, that's not his um, guesstimation or anything like that. That's no, a fact. That's I mean, business-wise, we play different I mean, we, buildings, if, you know? If, I'll put it this way, if, if, uh... This, their name would have never came up on this thing. Would you have any idea who Twisted was? I would not personally. But if but you kind of like did your, your did you know who right? Insane Clown Posse was two years ago? I did. So I mean, I, that's the so, point. So so I'm saying they, they constantly get that because we came out with them. So like you know, any interview they do, we come up. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So it, you know, right. with ICP, this that's and that. It, yeah. So you know, it just drives me insane to the point where, like, uh, uh, what was it like two years or a year and a half ago, something like that? We did an interview on LA with the, uh, with this guy called uh, No Jumper. You know what I'm saying? Um, and whatever, we went on there. We just were kicking it. Whatever, did an interview. Uh, however many months later, weeks later. Yeah. Well, yeah. Wait, wait, it was like, like it was like right away later. You know what I'm saying? The guy had twisted on there, and uh, I, I, we didn't know. You know what I'm saying? But somebody had told me like, oh yeah, they're on there. So I checked it out. I was like, fuck it. Let me hear what they said. You know? They told our fucking story of how we came up in the music industry. They, they, stole your story. Story. they took they our story past. and told this man, both of them told this man that I couldn't, this is why I was like, yo, super fuck them. <laughs> what do you say to Twisted? What happened to us? Like, as they we they were, here today, what do you say to Twisted? It's, it's, it's not even Twisted. Like, I couldn't know it. who that is. And finally, Young Wicked, he's a part of a rap group called Axe Murder Boys from Denver, Colorado. After winning a contest, they were signed to Psychopathic Records. Wicked would develop a bond with ICP, becoming their unofficial third member. He worked at the Psychopathic office in Detroit, helping engineer for other artists on the label. A super group was formed with 3-6 Mafia, ICP, and Young Wicked called Killjoy Club. Everything was going good until Jump Steady, whose Violent J's brother, was informed that Young Wicked, who was married with a child, was fooling around with his daughter. 
daughter. Jump Steady called Wicked into his office and told him to leave his daughter alone and they can both move on. Fuck. They, that was, when that dude, that dude Young Wicked, he was my, he was my uh, protege. Protege, yeah. He was my producer. I'm putting him on. Yeah. I love that kid so much. I was like, it's my goal. I'm sorry, let me take a drink. Do your thing. I said, I never said this for anybody. Yeah. I said, it's my goal to see you and your family in living in a paid off house in Detroit, all right, with significant money in the bank. That's my goal, right? That's what we were working toward for him mm -hmm. because he had his two kids out there and his girl was pregnant again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that was his dream to move them here. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted to live in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker got my brother daughter pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And betrayed the motherfucking hell out of all of us. Your brother's daughter? Yeah. How old was she? She was uh, of age. You oh, know? She was of age, okay. Young Wicked didn't listen and ended up impregnating her. This infuriated psychopathic records, especially because Young Wicked denied the relationship, he ended up going back to Colorado and signed with the rival label owned by Twisted Magic Ninja Entertainment. Violent J would throw shots at Wicked, saying he downgraded labels, and later a Magic Ninja artist named Gmo Ski would release a diss track called Pull His Resume, aimed at ICP. The two camps officially hated each other, and they still do to this day. Anyway, so what do you guys think? There are probably a few beefs I forgot to mention. Let me know which ones I missed. I'm out.